Is that the finance? Yes. Hello, good to see, see you again. again. How are you? I'm delighted to be here with you. And the finance team? Yes, hello. How are you, Mr. President? Thank you for a great idea that had a <laughs> number of repercussions. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes, hello. How are you? Gentlemen, how are you? Well, can we sit down? Similar to uh, the one operation that was just completed, in which we could become closer. And and uh, have more of a I'm looking forward to the May visit of uh, President of Madrid here. But, uh, I'll hear from you. Well, Mr. President, first of all, we, we want to thank you very much indeed for uh, this opportunity of having this conversation with you. We will also want to convey to you the uh, warmest greetings from President of Madrid. Uh, he specifically asked for some, asked for some Saturday to do precisely this, to send his warmest regards to you and his uh, uh, hope for a most successful meeting for me. I think I, hello. <laughs> please, Mr. President, these are the <coughs> farm editors from across the United States, and they're here at a the meeting here in Washington, and I've had the opportunity to speak to them, and uh, they, they do a great job of communicating the, the, the situation in agriculture to the public, and I, I'm pleased that you have a chance to meet with them. Well, I am too, and, and uh, I won't try to say now an individual hello to each one of you, but I understand that uh, I can go over by the door and then uh, we're going to have individual pictures taken with each of you and then I'll be able to shake hands and say hello with each of you. But I want to just add my welcome. As I said, I probably introduced some very, or interrupted some very uh, solid information that was going on here. I think that all of us are aware the, the agricultural community has some problems in our country. I've always felt that they probably felt the cost price squeeze during the big inflation days more than any other segment of our society. And uh, the like unemployment there, one of the last to be able to come back as we have this recovery we now have. I think that our big battle still remains the continual, continually dropping of the interest rates, inflation has certainly made a, the reducing inflation made a difference, but to some uh, in the farm industry, it, it also uh, has been part of the problem because there, as much as any segment of our society, there was a tendency to do business on the basis of continued inflation property values would continue to rise and so forth. And now we're seeing the effect of borrowing based on a value that has now begun to deflate and get down to a lower level, and that's a very great hardship for many. I uh, maybe have told some of you at times that I have a little more understanding, I think, of the farmer's lot than just sitting here at a desk or having been governor of California a number of years I've been one of those part-time ranchers and uh, I've come with stories that uh, I, I now definitely consider the ranch uh, a vacation spot. <laughs> <laughs> no longer try to farm. I remember one experience there. First I was breeding horses and at the same time running some grazer cattle and the uh, the horse business could be a heartbreak. In the cattle business, I remember one day when I received a notice that I was in a brucellosis zone. Therefore, the state veterinarians would show up and I would have all the cattle in a corral where they could be individually run in a chute for their brucellosis shots. 
and uh, vaccinated, but if there was, they would also determine if there was any brucellosis. So I got them all in the corral, and that wasn't easy. Then they arrived, and they started the process, and uh, I was a little curious, and I said, what happens if you find that these have brucellosis? They were all steers, grazing cattle, just to be grazed and sold with the increase in weight. And the doctors told me that, well, then I would have to sell them for beef. And, uh, and between the federal and the state government, I would wind up getting $75 a head in addition to the sales price for having made the forced sale. And I said, well, wait a minute. If they have brucellosis, what do you mean I could sell them for beef? And then they explained to me that brucellosis only affects the milk. The steers don't have milk. <laughs> they surely weren't my inspectors, Mr. President. <laughs> I said that uh, it wouldn't hurt with regard to the bee. And I said, let me get this straight. I sell them, I get whatever I get back for them, plus uh, $75 a head for having made the sale. He said, yes. I said, I only have one more question. Where can I find a lot of steers with Bruce and Bruce? <laughs> <laughs> I could buy them. That was my other. My other one was when I thought with all that ranch country going to waste out there, not going to waste, but not being fully utilized, that there wasn't any reason why we shouldn't be able to have our own fresh eggs at home instead of bringing them from the market. So I put in the batteries and got some chickens, and we started having fresh eggs. It was just wonderful. I'd go out to the ranch and ride a horse for a while, and mend some fence and then pick up the eggs and come back into town. Except that I discovered that the eggs only cost me a dollar and sixty-five cents a piece. <laughs> I thought I could do better shopping. Well, those are those are only in passing. They don't have anything to do with the serious situation of the, of the farmer today. And we know that uh, I say many of his problems have been caused by what had to be done and still has to be done even more completely, and that is bring down inflation and get back to a stable economy. Some of them were caught with debts that were out of proportion. And as I understand it, the, or do you want to use these figures, the, the possibility of foreclosures or uh, bankruptcies is probably running between 2 and 4 percent or will in this coming year, but that normal, the normal average is 1 to 1 and a half percent, so I think we have to keep that in perspective, but it doesn't lessen the tragedy for the farmer who finds himself in that position. Okay. Anybody have something they want to say and ask? Or? Mr. President, uh, how effective is U.S. foreign policy when uh, people are starving around the world and, and our country is continually trying to hold back uh, production uh, here at home? Now, how serious is but I guess how, how effective is, farm, is our foreign policy oh. when, when that sort of situation exists? Farm Farmers will often tell you that uh, <coughs> Why are we cutting back when people are starving in other parts of the world? Well, for one reason, the, uh, if it was just a case of farming and raising and producing, and, and we are doing a lot of this, of delivering and giving the food to those people who are suffering from hunger and starvation, as I say, we are doing a lot, but you can't, how do you uh, ask the farmer to continue producing is a cost of producing, and then have no market except to, to give it away. Uh, there's no question about this being a hungry world. And it's a, it's a tragedy that in a hungry world today, we, we find that uh, we can produce, so we can produce enough food to, to alleviate that. As I say, we have done, we have programs that are based on doing that, and it's government spending that's, uh, that's bringing it about. Uh, right now, one of the things that I haven't mentioned, and maybe Jack has, that's affecting the farmers also, is that our farm economy has become a 
great part of our export industry. In fact, our balance of trade would be much more desperate if we didn't have uh, the farm exports. But there has been a drop in that simply because of our own economic recovery, which has placed our dollar at such a value that uh, the rest of the world, number one, its currency does not weigh up to that value, but also they have not recovered as fast as we are recovering. And they just are unable to afford as much, to buy as much as they were before. I think uh, <laughs> we're going to have to get it. She's always happy to go on. Right, well, could, could I just want to get it up slowly, take uh, yours? Would you? Uh, yeah. you, you, cite it, you cite a lot of the economy and turn around the farm situation. Do you, when do you predict that the farm situation will turn around? And when do I predict it will come around? Only scholarly economists make predictions <laughs> of that kind. <laughs> and uh, you know there is a story. I can say, I can tell stories about economists because that's what my degree was in. I'm supposed to be one too. But I have come to believe that one of the first things I learned about economists was true, and that is they have a Phi Beta Kappa key at one end of their watch chain and no watch on the other end. <laughs> <laughs> And with the new farm program, you all should have been there the last week for the bill signing in the in the Rose Garden now. Where I think with that, I am optimistic that there is optimistic. The prices are up and are holding the firm thanks to the park to our pick program. Some other things, just the economic recovery. So uh, I I think we can weather, we're going to weather this storm. I'll go over here and look forward to seeing you.